Hello everyone and thanks for joining me again. This is part two in a series of videos on building a desktop app with Electron and React. In the first video we just basically took a create React app project starter and uh, rather than making it a starter for a web application we made it a starter for a desktop application using Electron. And I said that we would go ahead and build some kind of app that we could use in say a restaurant or a bar. Uh, we could display, say, for example, a menu on an overhead monitor, and then we could have that menu change programmatically, say, based on the daily special or whatever it is, your daily wine list or beer list. But I decided you'd be better served if I just built some uh, boilerplate code for an Electron React app. So I did just that, and I have the repository. I'll put the link to that in the uh, description of the video later. And basically all you'll need to do is clone the repository and uh, do a few steps for installation and you'll be ready to go. But before we do that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at just where we ended up last time. So last time we had a project we called Display. All right, and if you remember, When we ran the dev server, we had a self-contained window that opened up. Uh, it wasn't the full Google Chrome that opened up. It was just a self-contained window that made it look like a desktop, a native desktop app was working for us. And that uh, desktop app that we had was just basically a Create React App starter. All you would need to do from here in the same way that you always do with Create React App uh, is just follow the instructions here or edit it your own way and, and make it make it uh, you know your own app just like you always do with create react app and you know if you uh, go ahead and, and start a create react app project right now as of um, December sorry uh, November of 2019 this is what you're going to see so basically we just left that intact and made it an electron desktop app create react app starter Sorry, I'm rambling here. So this time around, what I've done is I've created a similar starter, but it's basically Electron React uh, app boilerplate code that includes React Router. So if you go to the repository, you can quickly get the link for cloning it. And go ahead and clone it in uh, whatever directory you like or clone it to whatever directory you like. And you can call it whatever you like. We can, I'm just going to call it Electron React App. Navigate into that directory. And install the dependencies. And if you're unsure about how to do this, I've got the instructions here in the readme file at the repository. Also, it uses Yarn to run some scripts, so you're going to have to install Yarn if you don't have it installed already, so do that before you attempt to install the, um, the dependencies. So right now what we've just finished is uh, step three. So we should be able to run the dev server now. Let's go ahead and make sure we can see our project code in our text editor. Okay. Right, so let's try to run the dev server. All right, and things are looking good. So basically, you can see that it looks very similar to the basic React, Create React App Starter. It's just that I've given it a new title, or I've given it a title, and I've also added React Router so that you can have linking to other pages. So if you clicked here, you would see the uh, About page. And I also have a link back to the Home page. And that's because I've added React Router. And if you go into your project source directory, 
and look at the index.js file, you'll see that I have React Router uh, installed and set up here. So if you're familiar with React Router and you know how to use it, then uh, that's all ready to go for you if you use this boilerplate code. One thing to point out here is that we're using hash router here and not browser router or browser router. And that's because we're not making web requests, but we are actually grabbing files from our, um, our local file system. So to do that, you'll need to use hash router. Also, another thing that I've done with this, um, this boilerplate is I've added an icon, a custom icon. And to do that, you'll have to add to your build script in your package uh, JSON file. And I don't mean your, your build script here in the, the actual scripts, but there's like a build property, and you'll have to add to that. And if you're unclear about where this comes from, you can just go to this um, URL, and I'll, I'll put the link to that in the uh, video description as well. And this gives you the documentation on how to add your own custom icon. And here what it's saying is that if you've got if you're using Windows and that's what I'm using I'm sorry if you're a Mac user you'll have to read and uh, figure out how to do that for yourself but it says basically add either an ICO file or a PNG file call it icon.ico or icon.png and make sure the file is at least 256 by 256 pixels all right so if you go into here, I've put it into my public folder, and that's where it's going to grab it from when it builds the, um, the application for the desktop deployment. And you can see it's just a simple PNG file. I grabbed something off the web. It was just a 256 by 256 uh, image. And that way, rather than seeing the standard... Sorry, let's stop this for now. Rather than seeing the standard um, you know, Electron logo or icon when you deploy your um, your app to the desktop and rather than having all of your different apps have that same icon you can have a custom icon and you can see that I've got that here right. and of course this is just a simple boilerplate code you can <clears throat> excuse me change that icon as you see fit okay so at this point we should be able to run build and uh, have this work on our local machine. Now if you wanted to change the icon you could and, and it's easy enough to do given the boilerplate code I have here. Like I told you all you have to do is get a file. It can be either a PNG file or an ICO file. Make sure that it's 256 by 256 and put it into your public folder. All right. So for example I'll go into my pictures directory and I've got a different icon here. Um, you can see that it's a PNG file. It's 256 by 256. I'm just going to copy this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it into my uh, public folder in my project. I'm going to go ahead and delete the old icon just because we're not going to use that anymore. Then I'm going to recall, I'm going to give this a new title of icon. Right, and that's per the documentation that we see here. Right? It should have the name icon.ico or icon.png. All right, so in my public folder, if I look at icon.png, it's now this image. Okay, and if we run build now, hopefully we'll see that icon uh, attached to our application. As usual, it's taking a little bit of time to finish the build. Don't see any errors so far in the build log. If you're running Windows, and this may be true for Mac users as well, sometimes when you try to do a build 
after having just done a, a build previously, you'll run into uh, an error and it'll say something like unable to commit. And I've looked around on, in, on the GitHub issues for the Electron Builder package and the only solution I've seen that works for people um, consistently is to actually just restart your computer and then do the build again. And each time you're going to rebuild your application, you'll have to um, restart your computer before you do it. And that just seems to be sort of a random error and I think it's something to do with Electron Builder which is included in this uh, boilerplate code. But it's the best uh, Electron packager that I know of, so that's why I've left it there. All right, but it looks like our build finished all right. So if we go into our dist folder, we see that our icon is now there in the uh, setup installer. We'll go ahead and double click that. And we see that our app works in production and we've got that icon now attached to our, our application, although it's not showing up very well here. If we close that and we open it up via our desktop and we can see now that our desktop icon has also changed, has that new custom icon. We see that even though it's not showing up very well here, it is working we were able to add our own custom icon and again you know now that we have routing hooked up with hash router rather than browser router we can add linking to our project to different pages All right now one thing to be aware of is if if you do add a react router and you add browser router instead it'll actually work in development mode but it won't work in um production mode. So once you deploy it to your desktop and you try to um, to open up the application, you'll just have a blank white screen. So keep that in mind. And like I said, use hash router and not browser router when building your project. Anyway, I hope that um, at this point you have a pretty good idea of how to get started with building your own Electron uh, desktop app using React. And I hope that this uh, boilerplate code helps you get started. There's other boilerplate code out there, but it's a little bit convoluted. I thought that I would put something out there that was a little bit simpler to use and get up and running with. So anyway, thank you for checking this video out. Uh, I may add another video or two to this series at some point, but uh, I don't know when. Maybe we'll look at uh, how to save data to local storage. Uh, you might already be familiar with how to do that, but that is something that you'll want to be able to do because using a database for a local desktop app can often be just a case of overkill. But anyway, we may get to that at some point in the uh, near future or not. As always, uh, thank you for checking me out and I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.